In this episode of the SketchUp Show, I'm going to show you six ways to build models faster in SketchUp. In this tutorial, we'll look at why you should be using SketchUp 2015 right now, how to stop wasting time every time you open SketchUp, how to use your keyboard to cut your modeling time in half, how to avoid drawing at all costs, how to solve common modeling problems with less steps, and how to navigate like a pro without even having to think about it. I'll also review the Space Mouse Wireless. Remember, if you're looking for more in-depth SketchUp tutorials, head to sketchupschool.com. But for now, let's get started with this tutorial. SketchUp 2015 is here, and it's 64-bit. If you want just one tip, Go download that right now. It'll make you faster automatically. 64-bit, that basically means that your large models will navigate faster, shadows are faster, tools and commands run quicker, and even your extensions will be faster. Basically, everything gets faster with SketchUp 2015. OK, so for the next tip, we're going to talk about how to set up your SketchUp workspace so you save time every time you open SketchUp. OK, so raise your hand if every time you open SketchUp, your drawing window opens up, and it's not exactly optimized to the full screen. That happens to me sometimes, and it's a quick fix. Rather than spending all the time to either set this up yourself or just dealing with the small size or it off to the side, it's really easy to just go ahead and take a second to fix that. And then what's great about it is now when you close this file and open a new one, or each time you open SketchUp now, the size you chose is the new default. Now another thing, if you start with a template that's not what you want, maybe you have to always delete the figure or change some settings that you see, you can actually save a lot of time by setting the template to something you actually want to use. And then again, every new file that you open in SketchUp will open into that new template. And the last piece are your tools. If you have a tool that you constantly have to go up into the menu and then fly out to some function and then find that tool just to invoke it, you're going to spend a lot of time hunting and pecking for the things you want to do. Rather than do that, take a few seconds to think about the tools you use the most and either make sure that they're checked on so that you can actually see the tools that you want, or Make sure that you remove the stuff you don't need. No sense in having two of the same tools. And also, you can find the tools that you actually do need to use quite a bit and move them into a place where you can get to them more quickly. Now, having the right tools in your toolbar is a lot faster than accessing them through a menu. But even faster is accessing your tools using shortcuts. When you're drawing in SketchUp, the tendency is to need to pick a lot of different tools to get the job done for what you're trying to draw. And when you add this up over an entire model, it can really slow you down. It's a better idea to get familiar with your shortcuts. So you can use R for rectangle, A for arc, E for eraser, and P for push-pull. And we can draw that shape a lot faster. So take a little extra time to get familiar with your shortcuts and set up ones based off of tools and commands that you use all the time so that you can access them with just a single key on the keyboard. So shortcuts make it a lot faster to draw. But even better than drawing fast is not having to draw anything at all. That's where the 3D Warehouse comes in. Here's a kitchen we drew for our Measure and Draw series. And it looks like a lot of stuff had to get drawn. But thanks to the 3D Warehouse, we didn't have to draw either of those fixtures. We didn't have to draw that window. We didn't have to draw any of this stuff up here in the front or the appliances. And so really, not that much left to draw. But we didn't even have to draw the cabinetry. And when you look at it, Really, all you're having to do is the stuff that matters to your design, the stuff that's unique to what you're trying to draw. And everything else 
you can just go to the warehouse, search for something that would be good for your model, and just put it right in there without having to draw it. Much, much faster than drawing that from scratch. Sometimes, though, you do need to create complex things yourself. And in those cases where it's going to take a lot of modeling steps, you should stop and ask yourself first, is there an extension for that? So I need to draw something that's a more organic looking shape. And so I bet that there's an extension that can speed that up for me. So I'll install this popular extension for creating organic shapes. So drawing organic shapes in SketchUp can be uh, a lot of steps and sometimes feel nearly impossible. Um, but with this particular extension that I downloaded, I happen to know that I just need to draw something really basic that just takes me, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 clicks here. And then I can open the extension. And with just three or four clicks there, I was able to turn that shape into something that looks a lot more organic. And just so you see what's going on under the hood, if I show the hidden geometry, you can see that each one of those little polygons would have had to have been drawn in from scratch, or I would have had to figure out how to use the existing tools in SketchUp to make this happen. And seriously, I don't even want to know how long it would have taken me to draw this from scratch. And the last tip, which I actually think is the most important for saving time, is to learn to navigate well. Because when you think about it, a majority of your time in SketchUp is spent navigating to where you need to be in your model. So there are a few different ways you can cut down on the time you spend navigating around your model. The first thing is if you're going to make big movements, you can use standard views to get to things like top down or one of the sides or maybe a 45 degree ISO view. Um, but for smaller movements, there are the navigation tools. Now you should never have to click on them because every SketchUp user needs to own a three button scroll wheel mouse, which allows you to zoom, orbit, and pan all by just using the mouse. Now, another thing to think about, if you had to take this orbit tool, for example, and spin this thing around, uh, a lot of people will say, OK, I got that going. But then they'll hit the edge of their screen, and they start trying to figure out and fight with the orbit tool. Or maybe you want to flip it upside down, and, and then you hit the edge of your screen. So stop thinking about navigating with these big sweeping movements. Instead, think of doing it with lots of small, little choppy movements, little zooms, little orbits, little pans to make those small, little navigation steps that you need. OK, so everybody needs a three button scroll wheel mouse, but you should seriously consider investing in a Space Mouse Wireless. With the Space Mouse Wireless, you can navigate anywhere in your model really quickly. Uh, it's really natural, the feeling of moving around. So you're not fighting it like with the three button scroll wheel mouse. And so then it makes it really easy and really smooth and dynamic to get where you want your model and see what you're trying to see. So I've been using this Space Mouse Wireless for about a year now, and I really love it. And I want to tell you about my experience and show you my biggest tips for incorporating it into your workflow. So my first tip is just set the Space Mouse Wireless down on your desk and start using it. Now, I've got it in my left hand, and my normal three button scroll wheel mouse is in my right hand. And the thing that happened for me was I found that whenever I tried to think about what I was doing and how I was using the Space Mouse and which things did what navigationally, that really uh, made it take longer for me to figure out how to use it. So just play with it. Don't think about it. Don't look at it. Twist the knob to the left. See what happens. Twist it to the right. Pull it up and down. Uh, use it like a joystick to flip things around. And really what I'm saying here is, Feel comfortable getting lost. You can always go back over and click on Zoom Extents and figure out how to use the Space Mouse by just playing with it. Now, once you get fairly comfortable with how to use the joystick part of the Space Mouse, it's usually going to be time to speed it up. So my next tip is to actually go into the Space Mouse wireless 
preferences and find where the speed is. And I needed to dial my speed up a little bit more, which allowed me to more quickly in the model get where I wanted to be. Now the last part, and probably the biggest tip, is if you have, if you have your left hand on the space mouse, you can remove it to hit your keyboard for shortcuts, but there's some shortcuts you're going to want to have in the context of navigating around your model. So you can set those too. Back in the preferences for the Space Mouse Wireless, you can set the left or right button to be a shortcut that you want. So for example here, I have Zoom Extents for the left button, which is really handy because uh, even me, who's getting fairly used to this, can sometimes just get right past it. And if I click that left button, it just comes right back into screen. And so uh, think about what it is that you need to do given the task at hand. Uh, for me, again, navigating around, it's common that I might just slip right by it, hit the left button, and it's right back in place for me. Now, all of that being said, the thing that I love the most about the Space Mouse is it's just really natural feeling. Like I said, I just learned it by just kind of figuring out what it was doing on the fly. Um, and it's super impressive for other people. So when you're navigating around, the movements are just really dynamic and smooth. Um, so definitely one of the best tools I added to my workflow this year. That's it for the six tips, though, for speeding up your workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.